this lesson, we're going to write VBA code in Microsoft Excel that allows us to hide rows on our spreadsheet based on the cell color. So you can see here I have a balance sheet currently, and I have major line items, and below each major line item I have sub accounts that make up this line item and the sub accounts are shaded in yellow. Now I like to have all the detail for these sub accounts but when I send this file to other people I only want them to see the main line items and not this detail below shaded in yellow. So what we want to do is create code that will hide these rows based on cell color. So to give you a preview of what we're going to build today, I can simply click this button and every row that has yellow shading will hide. And if I want to unhide it again, I can click this unhide button and the rows reappear. So now we want to create the code to hide our rows based on the cell color. So to do that, we want to go up to the developer ribbon Click on this first button here, Visual Basic. Once this new window appears, I'm going to right click in this project window, go to Insert, Module. Down here in the Properties, I'm going to rename this module Hide Rows. I'm going to begin with the keyword sub for subroutine and give it the name Hide Rows. And everything between the sub and in sub is where we'll write our code. So the first thing I want to do is declare a couple of variables. And the reason I want to do that is currently if we look at the end of our data, currently the last row containing values is row 37. But that could change. We might add new assets or liabilities and the last row could change. So uh, we want to make this dynamic. So I'm going to declare a variable called last row. So to do that, you use the keyword dim and then name your variable. We'll call it last row. And use the data type long because this is going to be a number. I'm going to declare a second variable called x. And this is going to represent a counter for our rows because we want to look at each row beginning in row one of column C all the way down to our last row variable and inspect each cell in column C and see if it's shaded yellow. So we need a counter variable. That is also going to be the data type long. So now I want to define my last row variable. And as I said earlier, this is something that can change, so we want to make it dynamic. So what I want to do is start at the very bottom of our spreadsheet. Um, and by that, I mean the last possible row there is in the entire spreadsheet and do the equivalent of control up arrow. So what I'm going to use is the cells property and it is like the range object but you can use numerical inputs for your row and column index. So for my row index what I want to do is use the rows property and count all the available rows on our spreadsheet. For the column index we want to look at column A so that's the first column, so that's a value of 1. And this right here will take us to the last row possible on our spreadsheet in column A. From there, what I want to do is the equivalent of control up arrow, and that should take us to our last row containing values. So to do that, we're going to use end Excel up and then use the row property to return that row number. That will get us the last row containing values dynamically. So now what we want to do is scan each row in column C 
and check to see if the cell color is yellow. So we want to repeat a series of steps until we get to the last row. So we're going to use a for loop. So it begins with the keyword for, and you list your variable counter, which is x, and you provide a starting point you want that counter to begin at, and an ending point you want that counter to stop at. So in this case, we want to begin on row 1 and go to our last row variable. Now, as I said earlier, we have a condition. We want to check to see if that cell color is yellow. We need to insert an if statement. And again, I'm going to use this cells property. And our row index this time is going to be our counter variable, which begins at a value of 1 and counts to our last row. Our column index is going to be column 3 because we want to look at column C. And what are we doing? We're looking to see if the interior color is equal to yellow. Now, unfortunately, you can't just say yellow. Um, you have to use a function called RGB, which is uh, red, green, blue, and it's represented by numerical values. Well, if you don't know what the numerical value of that color is, you can find out real quickly by going up to your home screen and under the fill section, this lower right box. We'll click on that and under the fill ribbon, Make sure the color in question is selected. Go to More Colors and then Custom. And down here you can see RGB. And then there are three numerical values for red, green, and blue. So it's 255, 255, and 0. So we're going to use a function called RGB. And the inputs are just those three numerical values that represent that color. So we're back into our if statement. We just uh, stated our condition. Now we need to use the keyword then to tell the if statement what we want to do if that condition is met. Again, we want to use the counter variable, but this time we want the rows to be hidden for that same counter. So in this case, we're on row one, our beginning point, and we want the hidden value to be true. Now we have completed our if statement, so we need to use the keywords end if to end it and then within our for loop we need to use the keyword next and state our counter variable and this will take it back up to the beginning to increment our beginning value of one to a value of two and it will repeat the steps and so on and so on until it completes the last row value so what I'm going to do to show you how this works is we're going to run through this code one line at a time. You can do that by uh, hitting F8. So I'm going to hit F8. Each individual line will highlight. Once I hit F8 again, that line will be executed. So you can see right now our last row value is 0. But if I hit F8 one more time, that value is 37. I know that's hard to see. So here's our for loop. Our counter variable is at 0. I'm going to hit F8. Now that x value is equal to 1. So I'm going to F8 through that. Now it's a value of 2. Now nothing's happening over here until we get to row 3. So now we're on row 3. You should see row 3 
be hidden once I execute these two lines here. And there it is. And all the rows beneath it are yellow, so they're all hidden as well. So now I'm just going to hit play to run through the rest of this code all at once, and you should see all these rows get hidden. And they are. So now what we want to do is quickly write some code to unhide the rows. So I'm going to right click here, go to insert again, and then module. I'm going to rename this unhide rows. Name our subroutine the same thing. And the code for this is going to be much easier. This time we just need to use the property rows without a numerical reference to a row number. And this way it will look at every single row on our spreadsheet. And we just use the hidden keyword and change the value back to false. So this will unhide any rows that are currently hidden. So I'll hit play. And you can see everything on our spreadsheet gets unhidden again. So now what we want to do is add some buttons. So we can just click on buttons and run our code. So under the developer ribbon, I want to go to insert and then click this first icon here for a button control. I'm going to draw a button in and then click on the subroutine I want to link that to. I'm going to use hide rows and then click OK. I'm going to right click and go to edit text to give this button a better description. Just say hide rows. And I'm going to insert a button to unhide the rows. And link it to our unhide subroutine. So now I can click this button and it will hide all the rows that have a yellow shading in column C. And if I want to unhide them again, simply click this button and they reappear. So that is how you can create code in VBA to hide rows based on a cell color in your spreadsheet. Hey, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.